Hey guys, it's Drac doing the mod tutorial for my Nerf Hypersight. I am hoping ultimately to turn this into an NIC primary, which means I want it to break the century mark, which is 100 feet flat. I think I can get that out of this plunger tube with proper mods and good rebarreling and dart fit. And I'm also going to remove some of the crummy stuff, like this stock that pops out and the entire barrel assembly has to go. If not, there's really no way to hopper it. I'm not sure how I'm going to, to rebarrel this. I may single it and turn it into a giant pistol because it gets a little bit of kick this way, and I like the idea of a giant oversized pistol. Anyway, all the screws are on this side of the blaster, and I'll take it apart first, and then I'll start going about removing these awful stickers. Maybe they looked cool at one point, but now they're just in really bad shape and they need to go. First off, it's a good idea to expand your Expanda Blast before you open it, otherwise it'll explode halfway through taking it apart like mine did. It's got the same vintage style crossbow screws, which is good because you could use them for a crossbow. Here, you've got to take out a screw and then once you do that and the one down here on the pop-out handle, it comes off into two pieces. Now after you've removed those, you can come in, and I use a flathead screwdriver to do this, and I started at the top of the scope and went in. You can half the blaster, as you can see, there's nothing on this half, and no screws hidden underneath the stickers. Now, after you've done that, you can see the internals. It's got a monster of a plunger tube, a basic catch mechanism, a spring that looks very vintage and tough. It's the same sort of spring a crossbow has, which means that I'll probably upgrade it. Over here you can see that this is the mechanism that holds in this black running rail, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. It also has a really tough spring. I could use that as a catch spring in something else. And then up here there's more pieces like this, which holds in the optional add-on barrel. As you can see there was a rubber gasket that held that in there, but the massive amount of dead space you add between the plunger, which ends here, and the barrel, which is here, and then when you consider that the darts only really load into this section of it, there's a solid foot of dead space once it's expanded, and that's just awful. I'm going to get much better ranges doing nothing but removing that. This piece here holds in the foregrip, so I may leave that in because I kind of like the foregrip. Of course, I'll remove it for now and replace it when I'm done modding. I'm going to rebarrel inside this most likely and seat a coupler back here depending upon how that works. I'm also going to remove this black piece, which I'm not sure how to do. It looks like if you remove the trigger, which has a very simple catch spring here, actually that's the trigger return spring, and then the catch spring is up on the catch and the trigger just releases it. But this black slide comes out, and I'm going to get rid of that because without the stock it's absolutely useless. Bottom line is, these look like what my finished internals will be. And I'm going to take apart the plunger tube now and start doing my mods to it, probably replace the spring and improve the seal. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Alright, so I went to Lowe's and grabbed myself a washer with a two and a quarter inch diameter because I was hoping I could replace the plunger head with that. The only issue is that the plunger doesn't really fit this washer very well. It's an atrocious seal. Which stinks because this is also a really bad seal. The Expanda Blasts, as they come stock, have terrible seals. So I tried to figure out a way to make it better, and I carved out the inside of the washer's inner diameter so that it gets a nice snug fit on the original gasket. And now that has just an incredible fit in there, even without grease. It's very nice. I can lift it with that. The friction alone is good, so when I grease it, I ought to get a perfect seal, which is what I'm going for because this is going to be an NIC blaster. This piece is also pretty flimsy, it's just ABS plastic, so I'm going to be reinforcing that with one of these washers, possibly on both sides, which is why I have two. But I'm going to set those aside, redo the seal. I finished sanding the blaster's two halves, and I'm going to leave them that way because I like the way they look. Next up, I'm going to carve down this plunger tube so that I can add a coupler and a Y on. Alright, so this is a segment showing the internals of my Expanda Blast before I put it back together. I found out that the stock catch and trigger spring are both plenty effective at working with my upgraded internals. This is the new reinforced plunger rod, and it needs those reinforcements because the extra power puts a ton of stress on this larger diameter. This is a K25 spring. I found it distributed force along this huge plunger. 
better than a K26. And then this is my new plunger with its integrated hopper. As you can see when I remove the integrated hopper, I've carved out a channel so that this is going to be a very clean integration when it's completed. And then the really neat thing is that when I lift this up, you can see that the Expandablast had a built-in dart stop and it nested the hopper perfectly. I've painted it black and left the top here so that I can put an end cap on. But overall, this piece turned out very nice. It's a hybrid style of hopper clip and I'm going to take it apart so you can see that. That's a 17 30 seconds brass sled that fits into the barrel itself. And then that brass leads all the way through the PVC that houses it into a Pet G barrel which goes all the way through to the stock barrel which is more for cosmetics than anything else and it's held on with glow in the dark hot glue. It protrudes a little bit but that's nice because I can see my darts leave the barrel and I kind of like it. I was going to fix it originally but I enjoy it. I'm going to put it together now and show you the finished product but I wanted to show you the internals first. As you guys can see, this is my finished Expandablast mod. It's very unique in that I don't think anybody's ever integrated a hopper like this into an Expandablast, especially not this cleanly with all the shell sanding and work I did to get it to fit in there as nicely as it did. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I'm calling it the Hoppablast tentatively because it's got a hopper and it's an Expandablast. But I'm hoping you guys can come up with a better name. Just don't give me any name that involves Fang because it's not painted up in my Fanger Red. And I don't want to paint it because I like this green. When you do, I'll get some black enamel and I'll redo this the way I usually do. But right now it's done in Sharpie, which is really easy to sand off. And it's just done temporarily so I can use it in the interim time. The draw is very heavy due to the K25. And the hopper holds a grand total of four darts. That's two, three, four darts... And then I put the end cap on when I fire it. I can fire it like a pistol. Or I can hold the front handle, which makes the prime a little bit easier, and fire it like a rifle. It's very powerful. I couldn't quite get it to break the century mark just due to the odd nature of the plunger. But it does hit about 90 feet on that first shot with a full hopper. Again, a full hopper reduces the dead space. I really like that I can prime it by holding the front handle because I've reinforced it, just like my snap bow, and still get great performance. This is a fine NIC blaster. I got a tiny touch of black paint up there when I was doing the orange tip, which I integrated onto the barrel very cleanly. I love everything about this blaster, mostly because it's unique and it's, I think, clever. Plus, it's powerful and it's a usable primary for the NIC, which is just fun. It's a cool blaster. And I'm very pleased with the final result. I'm also impressed by the stock catch because I'm using the stock catch spring and it worked very well. I did have to re reinforce the catch plate inside with some ABS plastic because there's a slight hollow space in the middle and the K25 was acting on that with a great amount of force and it was starting to show some pressure marks so I've fixed that. I do have one shot left so I'll fire that off. Whoops. Very pleased with how this mod turned out. Now I'm going to tell you about the giveaway blaster. The winner for the giveaway has been chosen completely at random, and they are this username right here, and I will be contacting them shortly, telling them how they can send me their shipping info so that I can give this away to them. Thanks to everybody who entered. There's a new giveaway that will be up within the week, and that's going to be a fun giveaway that doesn't have to do with a random drawing. It's going to be entirely skill-based, and I know that a few of you have been asking me to do a drawing that doesn't involve luck. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys respond to my ideas for that. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this mod in the comments below. Not only the name, but the idea. I'm really pleased with how clean and easy this mod was to do and how unique it is. I hope that people who have Expandablasts start to hopper them in exactly the same way to get great performance and make some really cool vintage blasters useful again. Thanks for watching.